everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're going to do an overview of my experience of the 2023 SHOT Show. I know that there's been tons of videos out there and I'm a little late in getting this video out because my channel has been fighting a strike. So I lost seven days of upload time. So that's why this is a bit late. With that being said, if you guys are not following me on Odyssey and Rumble, that's a good place to run to if you haven't seen any videos out for a while. Swing on by over there check me out, uh, give me a follow. That's a great way to support the channel as well. I also have a backup channel here on YouTube called Fit and Fire 2, that's T-O-O. I have all of those links down in the description below. So if you are interested in supporting me there, I would greatly appreciate it. In addition to that, uh, I have a lot of background stuff going on as well over on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. So if you're on one of those platforms and you want to follow me, I've got links in the description as well. My question to you guys is what was your favorite thing from SHOT Show? Let me know down in the comment section down below. It was really good to see SHOT Show back up to form and running full steam ahead like it had been prior to the pandemic. And I really do appreciate them kind of expanding the floor. Now I thought that they were going to have additional stuff uh, in Caesars and you're going to have to take like a tram or something like that and it was going to be a hassle to get over there. but. It wasn't, it was just a breezeway, kind of a walkway over to Caesars Forum and we were able to see some of the other um, content over there and I thought that was really, really cool. It's really great to see the SHOT Show expanding as well. So good on SHOT Show there. However, I will say that this year there wasn't really too many things that was earth shattering that was going to change the industry. A lot of incremental changes that will help progress uh, firearms technology into the future. However, nothing that was saying, check this out, we are revolutionizing firearms. And that's unfortunate, but I mean, it's not necessarily something that you would expect every single year. There is one thing that I thought was super, super cool and I love seeing that technology. We'll talk about that here in just a little bit. But the first thing that I wanted to talk about was Palmetto State Armory. I've already done a video on their 101 and 102 AKs and I got a lot of requests to talk about the PSA crank and I completely missed that. I really wish that I had been a little bit more uh, omnipresent in that moment to say, hey, wow, let's talk about this crank. But realistically, this was probably the most requested thing to talk about in a secondary video, so here you go. As mentioned, Palmetto State Armory is going to be offering a crink-off style firearm, and uh, that is going to be something really super cool. In the AK community, there is a subset of followers specifically for the crink, and to see what PSA was pulling together, I thought was pretty cool. Naturally, they're going to offer it in 545 by 39 and 556, which uh, I think is a smart move on their part. They say that it's going to be released in late first quarter, early second quarter, but unfortunately we kind of know how PSA works. So probably expect that into late second quarter or third quarter or later in the year anyway. So we'll, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. In addition to that, they're going to also offer it in 300 blackout and 762 by 39. So. If there is someone out there that likes to crank off but doesn't necessarily like 545 by 39, you've got a couple of other options as well. The next company that I went and saw was HRT. If you guys have watched the channel at all, you know I'm a big fan of HRT and naturally any chance I have to swing on by and check them out, see what they've got new for uh, this year or whatever year I'm talking to them, I'm definitely going to go ahead and do that. I wanted to do a standalone video for them, but unfortunately I had some audio issues. You've probably have caught it in some of my other videos and in Unfortunately, um, the audio in this video was completely corrupt. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about them real quick. Naturally, they are going to be releasing some upgrades to their plate carriers. It, they're some of my favorite plate carriers. I know other content creators like Warrior Poet Society and Tactical Considerations really do like their 
carriers as well. So if you've got their backing, you know you've done, uh, you've done yourself really good to have two rangers supporting you as well. So good on HRT for that. They also have the Arc Belt and they're collaborating with Valhalla Tactical to produce a really cool light that has a innovative um, tail switch that allows you to turn that light on no matter which way you depress the light. So I thought that was really super cool as well. Definitely give them a follow on all the social medias. Check out their uh, YouTube page as well uh, to keep you up to date on everything going on with HRT. The next booth that I went to was Beretta and they have a new pistol for 2023. It's really kind of an update of an older pistol and that's going to be the 80X Cheetah. This is a reimagining of their venerable Beretta Cheetah. This is going to be a smaller version of their 92 series that's going to be chambered in 380. And the updates that they've done to this is going to have a pick section on the dust cover and is going to accept a red dot as well. Another company that I went and talked to, and I've already done a short for them, but that is going to be Mission First Tactical. You guys may recognize them for a Magpul uh, alternative magazine or their minimalist stocks, but they've actually started to branch out even further to offer a very cool set of low profile backup sites, a new handguard, and of all things, a belly band. Uh, as well. So I thought that was really kind of cool. I think that their belly band is actually going to be probably a lot better than some of the other ones that are on the market today because it has a few features in it that is going to make it, uh, I think, a little bit more viable for carry purposes. So good on Mission First Tactical for expanding their line a little bit and I'm really excited to see uh, what happens with them moving forward. Psyonix is another brand that I was able to swing on by and check them out. I've already used one of their Psyonix Pro, which is a digital night vision monocle, uh, basically a PVS-14 that's instead of analog, it's digital, which gives you the ability to record as well. They've just introduced their Psyonix Opsin monocle, which is going to be super, super cool. There's a lot to unpack with this upgraded version of their digital night vision monocle. So I've already reached out to them and have requested a TNE and um, sample so I can run it through a night vision course that I'm going to take early March. Hopefully we'll have something to you guys by late March, early April to be able to explain a little bit more as to what's going on with it. But what I can tell you is the Opsin is going to push into new technology for digital night vision. All right, finally, the probably most interesting thing at SHOT Show, and you've seen it with all the other channels out there, and that's going to be the new red dot from Holosun. This is going to allow individuals to have night vision capability and or thermal capabilities as well. So I was really excited to see what that was all about. Naturally, there have been tons of other people talking about it, and uh, I think it's uh, technology that will be viable in the next probably three to five years, but unfortunately for us right now, it's probably not where we're going to really want it for two reasons. Number one, the field of view is uh, limited to up to about 62 meters, I think, which is not very far for a tactical purpose. And number two is the battery life just isn't there. They were telling us that they were changing the batteries out about every two and a half hours. And when we asked to find out what the overall length of a battery would be in that, uh, Red Dot, we really couldn't get a straight answer. What we were finally able to understand was it's about four hours worth of battery life. So not exactly where we would like to see it right now, but I would imagine within the next three to five years, that technology is going to increase uh, quite dramatically. And um, we should see something that's a little bit more viable. Um, in the coming years. So there you have it. That is my rundown of SHOT Show 2023. What has been your favorite thing? Sound off in the comment section down below. Again, this was a great opportunity to link back up with a lot of good friends and, uh, you know, rekindle those 
connections that I have within the gun industries and make new ones as well. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Thanks so much. Freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Catch you guys later. Bye, y'all.